And I'm here with former Republican State Senator Greg Brophy, who had a short stint running for governor in 2014. Most recently, the chief of staff for Congressman Ken Buck. You're now back in Colorado after the 14 months as chief of staff. First, let me start there. That, that's a very influential position. Why leave that job? I love Colorado, and I hated being away from my family, and, and I hated being away from the state of Colorado. I like to be able to see my farm occasionally. So we just heard about budget education. It relates to Tabor a little bit. As a Republican, are you someone that says with Tabor, we should always get a refund, let the voter get the refund? I'm a huge fan of Tabor. It forces the government to do something that no other government does, seek efficiencies. We have a problem, though, with Tabor now, and I think it's mostly caused by what these other guys have done. The hospital provider fee and the other expansions of, well, what it amounts to Obamacare, have committed spending um, on that area at the expense of every other area in state government. I mean, if it wasn't for that hospital provider fee, there wouldn't be table re table refunds going out this year or even projected next year or the year after that. We would be able to spend all of the money that comes in and prioritize it on education and transportation where the people, I think, want it. So in what scenarios where there's a Tabor refund, would you or other Republicans say, yeah, I think we probably should give some of that back and we can figure, or we, we should keep some of that rather, and we can figure out other ways with the budget? Well, I don't know that we want to do that. I really think we want to force the state of Colorado to find efficiencies in how they spend money. Something, again, that no other state has ever done. And everybody knows this. We have a problem, right? The things that government spends money on become more expensive at a greater rate than cost of, it, of living does, right? Healthcare and education cost more every year than, you know, technology does. No other government is forced to find efficiencies because they don't face this prospect of Tabor and Tabor refunds when they take in too much money. Keeping us kind of on the level going over time and we're not up and down the way California is, for instance. Now, we need to find these efficiencies in providing these government services, kind of like they do with charter schools, like they do with the community health care providers. And Tabor's the only thing that's going to make us do that. With a split legislature that you've been a part of before, what is realistic? And we've asked about this on previous episodes here of Politics Unplugged, of what is realistic for Democrats and Republicans to come together on? Give me some insight at the Capitol when you know one chamber is Republican, one chamber is Democrat. What happens behind the scenes to actually get something done in relation to what we're talking about? Being able to keep or not keep the Tabor refunds, dealing with the hospital provider fee. What kind of conversations take place? It's hard right now, probably harder than it's ever been because, you know, the American people are disillusioned with government at every level. I mean, take a look at the approval rating for Congress at something like 8, 9, 10, 12 percent. It's horrible. People don't trust their government. So if the Republicans give in, because there's just one thing you can count on Republicans to do, is not increase your taxes and not take away your gun rights. If you can't count on us along those lines, you can't count on us for anything. So the base will be furious if the Republicans give in on this. And the Democrats, on the other hand, want to provide more services, want to expand Obamacare, which is where all of this money is going. So they have a problem, too. The good news is they have to balance the budget. It's the only thing they're obligated to do. And so when push comes to shove, they will actually do that. The six members of the JBC will get together. Everybody will swallow hard, and they will give us a balanced budget with the, with the Tabor refunds that we are anticipating at $191 million for the upcoming year. They will do that. They just won't like it. I know the hospital provider fee is a very difficult conversation to have because it, it could take the entire show to describe what the hospital provider fee is. Do you believe that's something that could be broken off out of the budget and, and freeing up money for education and transportation and what the Democrats believe the money would be spent for? Or is this a boondoggle of some sort? Well, it's a mess, but it could be broken off. We've done that with the Division of Wildlife and with Higher Ed, but it requires, under Tabor, that you rebase. So you don't just get to keep all of the excess money. That would be some sort of accounting voodoo that's really not legal under Tabor. And I'm going to tell you, the Republicans aren't going to go for that because, again, you've got to be able to count on your Republicans to do one thing, and that's not raise your taxes. Now, you're an avid cyclist. I am. Uh, the Colorado just lost for at least one year the U.S. Pro Cycling Challenge, which apparently brought $130 million to the state, but as, as a whole, it couldn't sustain itself. Your thoughts on losing a race like that? Oh, I would love to find a way to bring that back because I do think that it 
drives more revenue to the state than what it costs the state of Colorado. It's a great event. I mean, for crying out loud, it, you know, you can, I can have a lot of differences with Governor Bill Ritter, and people can be mad at Lance Armstrong if they want, but those two guys brought that race here, and it really put Colorado on the map. Senator Greg Brophy, you're the cyclist. I'm a runner. We just need a swimmer, and we've got a little triathlon. There we go. Here. Thanks for joining us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.